Okay, um, Mike Garcia, Deckles uh, Unit 6 Curriculum Development. Um, firstly, with regard to this assessment, I'll just uh, refer to my poster. We were asked to produce a poster. Um, with regard to that poster, what we had to do was consider um, a couple of uh, different uh, vocational uh, educational contexts. So for that, um, with my poster, I tried to highlight that at the top. And the two areas that I focused on with my poster was my own, the area which I work in, which is a vocational course in further education, um, um, the Uniform Public Services, in this case, as you'll see from my images. And down here uh, in the black, uh, I identified offender learning, so individuals that um, um, are within the prison system, etc. And then with regard to our two educational contexts, then we, what we had to focus on then was uh, curriculum uh, development or curriculum models and specifically uh, how uh, those models might affect learners um, in those educational contexts and, and how our curriculum might uh, lead those learners on a journey. And that's what I tried to identify with my poster, um, was draw learners' attention to these different curriculums and then take them on a journey, with our end goal being our various targets on the posters. So what we would then hopefully go through that curriculum and then get at the end of it, or what would be the outcomes from that. So for example, if you take my, my first poster there um, with my, uh, my female police officer, this I looked at the product curriculum. So product, product, process, process, and praxis, and praxis in those different contexts, and what, what the journey would be for the learner. Now, I'll make a few notes here, but with regard to the product, although you've, you've all covered this previously, it's, it's, it's ob objectives, and one of the things I highlighted down here is specifications. We have set specifications. So for us as, as, as practitioners, you know, we, we need to follow those that is gonna lead us to our product. So that's straight away that restricts us. However, hopefully by the end of it, the learners are going to get a, uh, a set of key criteria which has to be met. Okay? And right at the end, we're hoping they're going to produce some assessments, they're going to complete some assessments, produce some sort of portfolio in my particular area. That's going to be IV'd at a board. And at the result of that, they're going to get a qualification if they go through our product our product curriculum. That's the idea behind it. What's interesting, and that's going to bring me on to talking about process now. Can I just stop you just before, because I had a, a question yeah. about that, that first bit. What do you think would happen if you took two individual teachers at two separate institutions, one of which received the specifications, all the objectives, the assessment criteria, and that kind of quite prescriptive model, and another one who just had a very broad outcome, a singular one for the entire spec, and they ran them both for two years. How would you see those two panning out? It's all it's completely hypothetical, but I think I think again, and that this is the beauty of it, and that, that is actually going to link on to, to the other the other examples, I think. But this is the beauty of it. It comes down to us as teachers how we approach that. So although indeed there might be a set of specifications and there might be some objectives Layla might choose to approach them in a certain way, or Philippa might produce the, the, the result, the journey that the learner is going to go on in relation to that should be down to us as teachers. That flexibility, if you like. You know, there are, they are there to be met, but how we go about delivering them in the classroom, or indeed out, outside of it, through activities, etc., that is the key, that's the key thing there. Um, it limits us, I agree, but... If you had a broader way of delivering it, potentially the outcomes might be just as good. What measures institutionally are in place to ensure that we do meet <coughs> these criteria set by awarding bodies? Are, are you talking with regard to targets? Well, you've got an IV process there to ensure that the, you know, the standards are met, haven't you? Okay. For a, for a start. Is that yeah. what you're implying yeah. there? Yeah, that, that's specifically what you're implying. So although, yeah, you might have had a broader area, the IV process would find that out, ultimately, if the specifications, the objectives hadn't been met, the assessments hadn't been passed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. So um, what was interesting to me was that I heard recently uh, the Poet Laureate was talking uh, about with regard to our own profession. And the Poet Laureate was highlighting that we were really in danger 
of losing our best teachers because they were going to walk away from this, this career. And they were going to walk away from it simply because we were being turned into robots that was just product driven because of funding related issues and pressures put on us so that actually, Jackie made the point earlier, you could sit the students in front of a machine and just press go because we're just dictating relate, maybe the old style rote delivery, etc. Because we're asking the students to jump through some set hoops. And therefore what we're doing is we're crushing that creativity or that flexibility in how we approach to get the best out of our learners. And it was quite interesting to see the Poet Laureate, it's quite a renowned position, she was actively you know, promoting our career and saying that this we cannot afford to allow this to happen. So that brought me on to sort of the process. And in this area I'm a, I'm a little bit passionate about because it's an area that I, the way I see it from our perspective, and my colleagues and I, is this is our challenge for us is to balance the three curriculums, to aim for somewhere in between. So we do meet the specifications and the product driven area, but that shouldn't detract from the process where the learner should be at the centre of things and this is about a journey. Okay, and we hope to take our, certainly my learners, I want to take them through a series of activities, visits, experiences. We start off by telling them that we will take them out of their comfort zone and I guarantee that, that we end up doing that. So in that journey, we end up then with a, a result okay, of, of the value added, the life skills, the experiences, the building their confidence, their self-esteem, which is so low when they first come to us, and then sending them out into the big wide world. Where I like to think that they can be just as competitive because they've got a different level of confidence. They approach and believe in themselves as a result of their experience and journey with us. The problem is, of course, there's a lot of pressure heaped on us to focus on the that area. Okay. Do you think but, that sorry. within your own um, area, public services, that you are given much greater scope to be able to achieve the things that you are? If we think of something like Layla with, with business or, or other vocational areas, do they have the same types of opportunities available to them? Probably not. If you, if you looked at it from the perspective of, um, you know, indeed why we get a lot of students come to us, and that was a point that I wanted to make actually, was that students don't come to us to do our course because they're going to get a qualification at the end of it. And we're going to show them, take them through a series of objectives. They don't. Quite simply, they come to us because they want an experience. My level twos are going to wait because they think they've had an experience of a lifetime because they've never canoed before or they've never been able to navigate around the Brecon Beacons. That's why they come to us. That's what they're going to remember college for. 